Joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Bob Good. He serves on the House Committee on Education and Labor and the House Budget Committee. He represents Virginia's 5th Congressional District. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Good afternoon, Tony. Great to be with you, my friend. All right. So it sounds like for now this bill is dead because people were watching. Um, but this is going to come back. This is not the first time she introduced this bill. How in the world did we get here? Tony, we have gotten to a place where we couldn't have imagined just a few years ago. As you know, this, this Democrat majority, this, this Democrat party, uh, wants children to be groomed in our schools, wants our schools to be talking with children about what their sex is, what their gender is, and to allow a child essentially to diagnose himself or herself with gender dysphoria. And then they want all the school personnel to support the child in that gender confusion instead of reinforcing the fact that they're wonderfully made, that God created them perfectly. God creates us male and fe female. We follow the science that's consistent with scripture. There's only two sexes, only two genders. Instead of supporting that, what they want to do is contribute to that confusion, that dysphoria, and only allow school personnel to speak uh, to that degree. And I can tell you that being on the Ed Labor Committee, that the, the federal government, the Biden administration, has even tied federal dollars to supporting this kind of policy right. in the schools. This is who they are, Tony. But this is a Democrat party, as you know, who just nominated a justice to the Supreme Court who was confirmed 100 percent by the Democrats who could not or would not even die or, or say what a woman was, could not define what a woman was, said that she doesn't know because she's not a biologist. This is where we've come. Well, I think it's very important, Congressman, that you just pointed out that this is coming from the highest levels of government. The president himself has made this a top priority. So it shouldn't surprise us that we see legislation popping up like this. Now, I was in uh, North Carolina this weekend uh, uh, preaching, and um, I mentioned this uh, as, as an example of the, of the cultural and political chaos that has enveloped our nation. What have you heard from your constituents? I mean, you're right there in Virginia. What have you heard? Thankfully, this is a losing issue for Democrats, and I think that's why you're, we're hearing that they're going to pull back from what this uh, Delegate Guzman had proposed. But think about it, Tony. This reveals who they are. What she said, essentially, was that parents should lose their children if they do not support their gender confusion, if they don't affirm them wanting to change their genders, parents should lose their children and be criminally charged for that. So while she may pull back till after the election because the Democrats realize it's a loser and they don't want to hurt their congressional candidates in the November 8 elections, it demonstrates what they would do if they could, uh, if they retain power in Virginia in the state Senate, if they take back the House of Delegates next year in Virginia, it shows who they are. Uh, this Democrat Party, there's a reason why uh, I'm a co-sponsor of my friend Marjorie Taylor Greene's bill that would make it criminal to perform surgery on children to cut off body parts, to maim them, to irreparably right. harm them in the effort to change their sex. And Democrats are going furious about that bill. If they didn't believe in doing that, they would be co-sponsors to our bill instead of attacking us for that. Yeah, absolutely right. And and we've supported the state version. In fact, we've had uh, that passed in the state of Arkansas, which, by the way, is in court uh, today. Uh, this is you're right on so many fronts, uh, Bob. This goes away for today, but it's back tomorrow after the election. But it was very revealing what Guzman said in an interview last week before the firestorm. She said, this is educating parents because the law tells you the do's and don'ts. I think she's got it backwards. I think parents need to be educating those who make the laws as to the boundaries that they have in terms of getting into the business of parents and raising our children. Yes, Tony, after 50 years of retreat uh, in school boards and the education of our children, we're on offense now and, and parents are motivated they're engaged, they're taking back their schools, not just parents, but community members, grandparents, those are concerned citizens who just care about the future of our country, let alone the present for our children. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for our governor uh, here in Virginia, who's brought some common sense reforms to what was the previous governor's disastrous policies that totally took parents out of the equation. But, you know, we shouldn't even allow parents uh, to tell a school to support gender confusion, quite frankly. No, it shouldn't happen if without a parent's permission. That's a very baseline. That's the most foundational thing that you wouldn't participate in, in changing a child's gender and re referring them for you know, puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones as a precursor for that 
horrible surgery that they want right. to do to children. The uh, only but, thing that stops it are those who stand up and speak out against the nonsense. And uh, Congressman Bob Good, I'm grateful that you do that from your vantage point on Capitol Hill and for advancing common sense legislation. And thanks for joining us today as well. Tony, great to be with you.